I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Smug Mug. Use Smug Mug for all of your professional or your personal photography printing needs. That's SmugMug.com. Check them out today. Hey, welcome back everybody once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements editing video. In today's video, as you can plainly see on the screen right now, is going to be creating a cube. Now these cubes are hot. I've seen these a lot around on uh, different people's uh, Facebook pages and uh, cubes are really interesting. So I wanted to show you how to make a cube and actually add pictures to it such as this one. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to just delete this particular cube and I'm not going to save it. Now what I am going to do here is we are going to start with a brand new file and we're going to start with a blank file. And I'm just going to call the name of this file cube. And click OK. Next what we want to do with this cube is we want to give this background that we're going to use for our cube some color. So you see on my color palette over here I have blue over white. So we're going to use blue click the paint bucket the paint bucket and we'll just paint this actual background blue next what I'm going to do is we're simply going to come over here to the right to our fill and adjustment layers and we're going to fill this with a pattern because we want to give the background a little bit of pizzazz and you can use any pattern you wish to use this is not a pattern class this is a class on how to actually create the cube then once I do that, I'm just going to simply change the overlay because that doesn't look very pleasing, that black. Let's change the overlay to overlay. And that's going to allow that blue to show through our pattern. Now we're going to go to view and fit the screen just so we can make this a little bigger. And now we can start building our actual cube. Now the cube is very very easy to build just follow along and if you have any troubles as always just rewind the video. First let's go ahead and start a new layer by clicking the new layer tab and we're going to go to our rectangle marquee tool. But now we want this to become a square and not really a rectangle. So hold your shift key down while left clicking and pulling out to make us perfect square. Then leave the mouse go, then leave your shift key go. Once you have that set, what we want to do now is we are going to fill that with a gradient of white over black. So down here on your color palette, click on the uh, top here, it says default foreground background and flip it white over black click the gradient and I want you to hold your shift key down again left click and drag from the left to the right and leave go that is going to give us a white to a gradual black once we do that I want you to just simply click control or command J and duplicate that once you have that duplicated, just to make this a little easier, I want you to double click on layer 2 and rename it top, T-O-P. Now once we have that done, let's click back on layer 1. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make some adjustments to layer 1. Go ahead and turn the top one off, the visibility, and we're just working with layer 1. What we're going to do first on layer one is we are going to go up to image, transform, free transform. Now we're just going to make some changes here to this. Now you can click here and drag up and drag over and pull it around like that. But I find it's just as easy, much easier actually, to actually type my values in. So let's go up here to the height. We want the total height to be 90%. So just type in there 90. Let's uncheck that constrained proportions. 
And on the width, let's just change the width to be 70. And now we have the proper width that we want. The next thing we want to do before we actually check the box here is we want to right click on top of this and we're going to go to skew. Now when you go to skew, this is basically going to be a uh, adjustment that you're going to have to kind of get the feel for. There's no way to actually tell uh, or give you a number of where we're adjusting this to. So we're just going to go ahead and make an adjustment to it. And I'll show you this. We're going to click on the right hand side on the black and just start pulling it straight up. And this is actually going to give us an angle for our cube. Let's pull it up here just a little bit higher. Uh, right about there. Now once we get that done, we are going to go ahead and go ahead and click the checkbox. Once again, make sure you look at it and you'll see the angle here. You see my angle. Maybe I'll even give it a little bit more angle. And you will get the fill for this, folks. There's no way for me to tell you how high this is. You will just get the fill for where this angle should be. So you might have to do this a couple times. Click the checkbox. Now what we have to do is now we're gonna we don't want to redo this all again. We could have created another layer and redid all these steps. It's easier if we just go ahead now and do a command or control J. Now we have the second layer, and it's clicked on this layer now. And what we want to do with that particular layer is we are going to go up under image. rotate and then under rotate we're going to flip the layer horizontal and what that does we'll click the move tool here that gives us the other side of our box you can see there we can actually put this on and now we have the other side of our cube that we need and that was a very very simple way of doing that instead of uh, trying to make all the layers and re, uh, redoing that over and over and over so here we have our two sides, our left side and our right side. If you wish, you can rename those layers, but you don't really have to. What we're going to do, though, is hold my shift key down and select both those layers. I'm going to move this over just a little bit, right about there. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to work on this top layer. So click the visibility back on so we can turn it back on there once again. And now we're going to move this top layer around and get it put into our proper position. So once again, we're going to click on image, transform, free transform. We can see we moved it around there. Hold your shift key down and you're going to spin it. We're going to spin this around, try to line this up as best we can here with the corner right here and we're going to actually pull this up just a little bit not too far off the picture and then we're going to hold down either our alt or the option key and we're just going to click and drag it up what happens then is you see it's flipping it over for us it's actually flipping it on a three-dimensional plane for us here so it's very easy to do leave go you can drag this back a little bit and what we're trying to do now is we are going to actually put this into the proper position there where we want to get it in and lock down all right once you get that placed where you want it placed at now the box is complete because we have a top on there what you want to do now is hold down your shift or hold down your command or your control key and click on that top layer because we have to change the lighting pattern a little bit so once again we have white over black choose your gradient and hold your shift key down and click from the center and drag up now we have that light on the both sides in the front and coming across the top so it looks like we have a light shooting from the front next what we need to do now is we are going to start adding some pictures to our cube. To do this, let's simply go here. And you can see we already have the square made. Let's show you how I did that. Select, deselect. 
Once again, I just simply held my shift key down with my rectangle marquee tool. And I just simply clicked it over and drug uh, out to the right. And click on edit, copy. And we're going to paste it right here. So edit, paste. And then we're just going to simply resize this. So it looks to be the point of it's going to fit in the box. Click the little check box. Then go to image transform distort. And we're just going to simply distort this and pull the edges onto the edges of the box. There we go. Again, we're going to pull this back. And we'll put that on there. Pull this down here just a little bit more. Just so it's on the edge of your box. Click the little check box. That's perfect. Now as you put these on, I'm going to give you a little secret. The reason we wanted the gradient underneath for a lighting pattern, but you can see there's no lighting pattern on our picture. What we're going to do is change the blending mode again to overlay. That'll allow that white to black to come through. And now that lighting mode is actually on top of that picture, giving it our three dimensional look. Let's go with our next picture here. I already have it selected the same way we did before. And you can use the shortcut keys, Command or Control C. And then we'll run this one. We can go to Command or Control V to paste it. And if it's a little larger, just drag it from the top. Make sure Constrained Proportions is selected. And we've uh, learned that in the past. And once again, we're just going to make it so it's going to fit about that box size. Click the checkbox. Then we can go right up here again to Image, Transform, and Distort. And we're just going to distort this one into this box. So as you see, it's a little time consuming, but most of our editing jobs that we do are. And this is what makes it fun to use Photoshop or Photoshop Elements is because it allows us to do things with our pictures. And people say, how did you do that? That's pretty amazing. That is what we're looking for, folks. When we do things uh, with our pictures. Let's try and get that dead on there. There we go. Once again, that's done. I'm going to change my blending mode to overlay. And I overlaid that one just to get my lighting effect. And we will go with this last picture right here. And we're going to actually deselect this. I don't like where this was. So we are going to hold our shift key down again. Oops. Oh, cancel that. Make sure we have this selected. This being the uh, rectangle marquee tool. And again, we're going to shift and we'll pull this. I just wanted to get more of the uh, dam in here. Again, I can do command control C to copy it and command control V to paste it. I'm going to resize this one down just a little bit. Put on top of our cube here. Look about where we're at. Say, yep, that's pretty good. And we will do edit, transform, and distort. And again, we're going to just distort this on top here. Just like so. And get these pictures on our cube. And we'll move on. And pull it down just a little bit more. Right about there. We're going to check the box here. Again, change your blending mode to overlay. Now you can see we have that nice light all the way around. Looks really good. All right, just check that. Okay, now what we're going to do is go down here to the bottom to our background layer, and we're just going to add a new layer. The only thing I want to do now is I want to make this box look more even like it's floating or more like it's three-dimensional. So what we're going to do there is just change this back, make our foreground black, grab a paintbrush, and we're just going to go underneath this box right about here. We'll make it just a little bigger. From one side to the other, just like so. Take the opacity and just drop it down a little bit on that. 
And that gives it that little shadow in the bottom like it's floating in the air. So once you're done, just click on File and save that out. Save it as a JPEG so you can have it printed. Or do whatever you wish to do with the picture. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great little edit. It's a lot of fun to do. Folks, I'd like to thank you so much for joining me here on Jack's Tech Corner. Uh, you found me on YouTube at 42 Technoman, which that's a weird name, but I've been using that since 2008. And uh, my Photoshop editing videos. I'm glad you've been enjoying those. And if you have, please subscribe to the videos. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please join us on our Facebook group, Jack's Tech Corner. You can find us there. A lot of uh, talk about photography and editing and a lot of great people there. Uh, to help you along uh, if I'm not around. And um, they, they definitely know what's going on. And please stop by my website, jackstechcorner.com. Pick up a DVD. You're going to learn a ton of editing from it. Uh, if you enjoyed this editing, I'm sure you're going to enjoy all the edits I have on that DVD. It's packed full, and you'll have a lot of training, a lot of experience. You're going to learn a ton of new uh, editing techniques on that uh, DVD. Or if you want to learn Lightroom 4, I also have that DVD available. Once again, thank you very much for joining me here on uh, Jack's Tech Corner for another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Until next time, take care and bye for now.